This week's edition of Abandoned Towns is a special edition. On my last video about the Mara Roman Kingdom, which you can find somewhere linked on screen, one of my viewers suggested that I cover the medieval Khazar city of Sarkal in modern day Russia. So big shout out to Admin for suggesting such a great topic, and if you want to see a specific historical topic or town covered, please leave suggestions in the comments below. I'll be looking at them every week and hopefully I will choose yours. Let's jump right in it. Roughly 100 miles away from the Ukrainian border in the Rostov Oblast of modern day Russia, one should find the medieval ruins of Sarkal. Instead, all there is are the banks of the River Don. Sarkal in the modern day now rests at the bottom of the River Don. The question we want to answer is what happened to the once vital trading town and strategically important fortress that occupied the area? Before we dive too deep into that question, we should answer the question of who are the Khazars? As mentioned prior, the Khazars were the ones who founded the city of Sarkal. The Khazars as a people were a nomadic steppe people who conquered the Kuban and Zaporizhian steppe lands in Europe. These are situated in modern-day Ukraine and Russia. The Khazars even managed to briefly expand southwards, deep into the modern-day Caucasus. The Khazars were a Turkic people, like many other of the steppe tribes. The Khazar claim to historical fame was their seemingly odd conversion from Tengri, the native religion of steppe peoples, to Rabbinic Judaism. While it's clear that the ruling elite in some shape or form converted to Judaism, the scope of that conversion is unknown. Currently, there are widespread debates regarding the level of conversion amongst the lower nobility and the common people. Throughout their history, the Khazars ruled the area generally surrounding the Don and Volga rivers from about 650 AD until the middle of the 10th century. Sarkal was ordered to be constructed by the Khazar Khagan in 833 AD. It was meant to shore up defenses along Khazaria's northwest border. According to the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII Porphyrenitus, the Khazars built the fortress of Sarkal as a response to the appearance of the Magyars in the region. This reasoning is further supported by the writings of 10th century Persian geographer Ahmad ibn Rusta. The Khazars, being a 9th century nomadic steppe peoples, meant that they largely lacked the engineering capabilities to construct a sophisticated stone fortress. Thus, the Khazars requested that their ally, Byzantine Emperor Theophilos, send engineers to assist with the construction. Generally speaking, the Khazars and Byzantines were more often than not allies. The Byzantines would sometimes pit other nomadic peoples against the Khazars when they felt that the latter was getting too powerful. The Byzantines and Khazars both fought the Arabs extensively, often side by side, in the 7th and 8th centuries. By the 9th century, when Sarkal was built, there was still occasional fighting between the Khazars and Arabs, but by that time it had slowed down tremendously. Further emphasizing the close connection between Byzantium and Khazaria, Interestingly, the Byzantine Empire even had a Khazar Emperor. Emperor Leo IV, the Khazar, is believed by historians to be of Khazar descent. It is said that his mother was a daughter of the Khazar Khagan at the time. Emperor Theophilos sent his court engineer Petronas Kamateros with a team of professional workers in Sarkal. In exchange for Byzantine help, Khazaria ceded multiple Crimean city ports and the important Black Sea port of Cherson. The name Sarkal in Turkic means White Fortress. It was named this due to the white limestone the Byzantines used for the construction of its walls. Sarkal contained two gates, four towers, and a main citadel. Excavations have shown that Byzantine columns were used extensively in the design of the fortress. It is stated by Constantine VII that the castle had a permanent garrison of 300 Turkic warriors. This might sound like a small garrison, but because the Khazars were a nomadic people, they tended to travel in mobile hordes, only truly manning fortresses during times of conflict. Sarkal was not just a military fortress, but it also served as a commercial center. 
being a stop on the Silk Road. There are countless archaeological remains, pointing to the heavy presence of trading caravans and merchants. The city had a manufacturing industry with multiple forges and potter shops. The fortress also had residential living space as well. And we even know some of the makeup of its population through archaeological digs. From bodies exhumed and tested, the town's population appeared to be a mix of Slavic peoples and Turkic peoples who were noted to be quote-unquote Mongolian in genetic phenotype. Interestingly, bones of dogs and horses were found buried amongst them as well. Oddly, many of the bricks and pottery have interesting carvings and designs on them, which are still being preserved and studied today. Scholars hope that these carvings might provide greater insight into Khazar culture. The Byzantine engineer who built Sarkul, Petronas Kamateros, then toured the recently ceded Crimean coastal towns. He then returned to Constantinople and explained to the emperor that the ceded cities were wealthier and more strategically situated than the Byzantines initially anticipated. In response, Emperor Theophilos declared Cherson a Byzantine theme, and named Petronas Kamateros as its strategos, or a Byzantine general or commander. Interestingly, Petronas became the quote-unquote general of the financial ministry of the Byzantine Empire, and seemingly ruled Cherson until his death. This is a shockingly good and uncharacteristic ending for an ambitious Byzantine bureaucrat. Sarkal would remain under Khazar control until 965, when Svatoslav I Igorovich of the Kievan Rus captured the city in his greater war against the Khazars. Sarkal would be sacked and badly damaged by the Rus forces. Only four years later, Svatoslav sacked the Khazar city of Attil, and the Khanate was permanently destroyed. The Khazar people then dispersed as a whole, and today there are hotly contested debates surrounding where they ended up. Regardless, this was the effective end of the Khazar civilization, state, and identity the city would be renamed to Belaya Vezhna, simply meaning White Tower or White Fortress in Slavic. The Slavs would also resettle and rebuild the town, once again turning it into a major commercial center. The town would remain under Kievan Rus ownership until the 12th century, but in 1117 AD, the Kipchaks conquered the city of Sarkal, the Kipchaks looted and sacked the city, reducing it to rubble. It remained in this state, abandoned, until its excavation in the 1930s. During the 1930s, the site was excavated by Soviet historian Mikhail Artemonov. At the time, it was the largest excavation of a Khazar site ever undertaken. The excavation started a push for more research into the Khazar civilization. Unfortunately, it's believed that only about one-third of the site has been excavated and properly documented. In 1952, Sarkal's archaeological site was flooded by the construction of the Tsilmansk Reservoir on the Don River, and as a result sits at the bottom of said reservoir. The remaining two-thirds of the city cannot be excavated for the foreseeable future due to being inaccessible. Today, many of the excavated items rest at the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg and various local museums in Rostov Oblast. It's worth noting that a small village only a few miles away from where the medieval fortress of Sarkal once sat bears its name today. It was renamed Sarkal in 1987 by Soviet authorities, and today has a little over a thousand people. In a way, this village carries on the legacy of the ancient Khazar fortress of Sarkal. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this week's edition of Abandoned Towns. Please check the description below for useful links. 
um, please give my link tree a click. There you'll find my TikTok, Instagram, uh, and Spotify where I plan on posting content. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment down below for what you'd want to see next. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more.